philosophy should be fun, should be exciting, it should be something you wake up every day and go, wow, I can apply that, that is how my life is. You have to start with something from ancient Greece, and you can either go in one of two directions. You can go with the pre-Socratic philosophers, which is somebody I'm particularly fond of, Heraclitus and Pedicles, and they're great anthologies of that. Or you can obviously start with Plato, and you know he's the father, in some ways, of modern philosophy. I wouldn't start with Aristotle. So you know the great things like the Republic or Phaedrus, which is more about love. Um, I can't remember which dialogues come to my mind. Symposium, which is a great, great dialogue. Something from Plato or from the pre-Socratics would be the number one thing to go to. And then you have to do something from the Romans, um, probably a Stoic, and that would either be someone like Seneca or Marcus Aurelius. Marcus Aurelius is maybe the best one to start because he's so direct and it's so applicable and it's so important. So that would be the number two place. The number three would definitely be Montaigne. He's kind of a little bit more literary, but he's the greatest philosopher of what we would call maybe the Middle Ages in Europe, or even the Renaissance, he sort of predates it a little bit. Um, I would definitely start with Montaigne, who was heavily influenced by the Stoics. These two, the Stoics and Montaigne, have incredible relevance to your day-to-day -day conduct. And the problem with modern philosophy is it's also intellectual and abstract. It has nothing to do with your day-to-day -day life. And I think we want to get back to that kind of powerful connection. And then fourth, in some ways, it's, it's, a, it's a personal thing, but I would go to Friedrich Nietzsche, who when I was growing up was by far my favorite philosopher, um, is incredibly powerful and brilliant. Some of my ideas maybe might go a little too far for you, but I thought um, he was one of those philosophers who thought that how you live your daily life is more important than all the abstract ideas you can imbibe. He was definitely against all the great, the Kants and the Hegels and the, those who create a system. And he was more like an Eastern philosopher in so many ways. And um, I just think if you're young, particularly if you're young, his voice is so strong and so seductive, I would recommend that. And then I'd have to choose somebody from the 20th century. And there are many great philosophers, but if you're young, the ones that I um, gravitated to would be someone like Albert Camus, the great French existentialist philosopher, because he's speaking to things that I think have to do with the modern world. He's very in tune with some of, sort of the issues and the ways we've developed in the modern world and kind of the narcissism that's governing our lives. And he's giving you recipes for how to deal with some of the kind of meaninglessness of, of the world today. There are other philosophers I like, but they're too abstract and intellectual. And if you read them, it's going to put you off philosophy. Philosophy should be fun. It should be exciting. It should be something you wake up every day and go, wow, I can apply that. That is how my life is. And I think Camus very much gives you that kind of centeredness in your day-to-day -day existence. So to repeat, one of ancient Greece, either the pre-Socratics or Socrates or Plato himself, a Stoic, either Seneca or Marcus Aurelius, or probably Marcus Aurelius, Montaigne, who's a fabulous writer, Nietzsche, and then Albert Camus. I know I'm leaving somebody out, but I was only asked for five, so those would be my five.